The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. Let's uh, discuss the news of the week. We had some very interesting stuff happening, so we have a lot to discuss uh, today. Uh, first thing, now Dog and Sunita, they're at the supermarket in New York City. Um, it's been listed in XMR Bazaar, so it's going to be really nice to... Um, to see them shop there. Now let's discuss this post. So Doug posted that um, uh, the show is yours. Uh, you can pay $600 to go to the Bitcoin conference and hang out with a bunch of punks uh, or $89 worth of untraceable XMR. And you can go to monerotopia.com in Mexico City with a bunch of cyberpunks. And uh, somebody made a t-shirt that says Bitcoin is a hawk to all on central banks, um, which, is, which is funny. Yeah, and then uh, third point, he said, I'll sign also an executive order directing the IRS to issue public guidelines that all transactions between Bitcoin and the US dollar are unreportable transactions and by extension, non-taxable. Then um, last point, he said, I will also sign an exec executive order directing the IRS to treat Bitcoin as an eligible asset for 1031 exchange into real property. So uh, quite some big um, propositions that he made on um the bitcoin conference on day one uh, um that things that he will do on day one as president so that's quite interesting then we have um minimum box uh they're showing their um their statistics so um large amount of transactions are made in monero 69 percent 27 percent are bitcoin litecoin three percent lightning just one percent so uh the overall majority as we can see is uh in monero so, and it's such the case with uh, coin cards and the rest of them, Monero is slowly taking over. Before maybe it was Bitcoin and some, but now it's uh, Monero predominantly taking over all the, all the um, uh, payment methods used. So that is very good to see. Now let's discuss, uh, this one is very interesting. And it's in regards to JD events. And um, this one is about bioweapons. So essentially, let's go. Um, so we have a uh, retired pharma R&D research and development executive, Sasha Lat Latipova, and they're basically all par partnering together um, to make bioweapons. They said they got huge contracts from the Department of Defense, including specifically DARPA, BARDA, and DITRA. And uh, it's been noted that uh, they've done horrific experimentation on animals, including the injection of a virus and vaccine combination containing both Ebola genes and Nipah virus genes. Uh, they're telling us this is some sort of standard science that they need to do to study vac vaccines. It's not, and I'm looking more closely into this paper. It appears to me that the Defense Department is working on bioweapons. Uh, so this is quite concerning. And then it goes into, let me see if I can find it. Um, but yeah, so essentially they're getting huge contracts um, for, for bioweapons, a lot of money, a lot of money involved. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so they also said that they, um, they've done horrific experimentation on animals, injecting them directly into the brain with what they call vaccine virus. And in the same paper, they call it the chimeric vaccine and the chimeric virus, the same sub exact substance, which contains backbone of live replicating virus, including Ebola genes and Nipah virus genes. So um, it's quite concerning stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very, it's very concerning stuff. It's quite scary, to be honest. Then, so let's go into here, actually. So we have Proton Wallet. Um, they wrote on July 24th on Twitter, today we're launching Proton Wallet, an open source uh, self-custodial Bitcoin wallet. And then somebody wrote, currently, here comes the shit coins because they wrote on, on Reddit that they're Bitcoin only. And then they replied to that by saying that we're not interested in uh, shit coin. Then let me read what uh, self privacy said about that. He replied, strangely out of character and unprofessional response here, portraying blind Bitcoin maximalism from a company touting private by default, as its tagline is confusing AF, especially when I know for a fact they don't consider Monero shitcoin from many direct conversations with them. They even approached me a few years back, seeking help with a Monero integration that they don't 
that I didn't um that I done didn't pursue for reasons I wasn't told. So um yeah this one um this one is very interesting as well. Uh, somebody wrote down they didn't call Monero shitcoin and if you read their initial statements they do leave the door open for future possibilities. And as Seth said, what other statements would like to see that? So the fact that they're pro, so pro-privacy, but Monero is not part of the equation is uh, quite suspect. But who knows, maybe one day we'll see Monero as part of their wallet. Um, then let's take a look at... Oh, okay, so this one is... Wait, t- Tony, I'm chiming in here. Yep. So we, we are going to go shopping. We just we just spoke with the guy who runs the runs the store, and he is in fact a a Monero guy. Um, so we'll be shopping in the background, and he's going to be our special guest today. He agreed to to jump on and talk about why he's accepting Monero, which is super cool. Nice, awesome. So we'll be we'll be shopping here in the background. I'm not going to grab too too much stuff actually because we don't really need right a lot right. Yeah, we don't need not right now. <laughs> But uh, we're going we're gonna to grab some things. Also, I don't want to scare him with walking out here with like $400 in groceries right now. We're, we're, we're going to start slow. We're going to start slow. So I'm going to buy some essentials. We need butter. Get some butter. I'm going to get some uh, kombucha. I mean, if this guy's willing to accept Monero on the regular, I will be, I'll be shopping here. This will be my, my freaking supermarket, which would be freaking, freaking amazing. So... Uh, we'll continue shopping in the background, but yeah, this is how we do it, guys. This is how we build it out. Let's go. Yeah. So impact on privacy coins, as we discussed, as we we're going to discuss, actually, uh, privacy coins, which are designed to provide greater anonymity, could be particularly targeted by the bill's measures. This could lead to restrictions or bans on privacy coins, negatively impacting their users. The bill's focus is on combating terrorism and illicit financing through stringent regulations and increased surveillance uh, pose significant risks to the principles of decentralization and privacy. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure how, um, you know, who should be the next president of the United States. Definitely not Kamala, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, but who's a better candidate, RFK or Trump? Um I mean, RFK doesn't have a lot of chances, and I would definitely take Trump over uh, Kamala just as anybody else. But yeah, this would be quite concerning if uh, if this is the case, of course. Uh, then, so we're gonna play this video later. Okay. Now, this one is interesting as well. So. Um, Whitney Webb posted on Twitter. Oh, no, sorry, X now. Um, she said, for those interested in the recent news regarding CrowdStrike, consider that CrowdStrike is part of the Global Cyber Alliance, part of the WEF led effort to force you to adopt digital ID for internet access in order to stop cyber crime. Um, Microsoft is part of this too. See above article for more on the groups pushing digital ID as a prerequisite for inter- in- internet access and the push to end. Online privacy entirely. They include the GCA, WF partnership against cybercrime, and several more. So yeah, essentially, if you don't, if you don't show your digital ID, you don't show your biometrics. Sorry, you don't have internet access. And um, the fact that let's go, let's go here. So um, if you go on WF, they write they have an article called the Global Coalition for Digital Safety. With the growing challenge of terrorists and violent content and the exploitation of children online, there's an urgent need for more deliberate global coordination to improve digital safety. Now, is this what they really care about? Not really, no. I mean, what they ultimately want is for you to have no privacy and for them to control everything that you do online and to be able to track it if if they want to very easily. Uh, then this one is very long um, article, but it's very, very interesting. So we're going to go over here to the top. So it says, notably, the WF partnership against cybercrime employs a very good broad definition, like always, they always include broad definitions of what constitute, constitutes a cybercriminal. 
uh, cyber criminal could be talking about uh, against the WF on X or whatever platform. So you could be entitled a cyber criminal. Um, as they apply this label readily to those who post or host content deemed to be disinformation that represent a threat to democratic governments. Um, <laughs> and we've seen a little bit of disinformation since um, uh, since COVID and uh, um, yeah. Uh, so, but the WEF's interest in criminalizing and censoring online content has been made evident by its recent creation of a new global coalition for digital safety to facilitate the increased regulation of online speech by both the public and private uh, sectors. So yeah, um, slowly they want to get more fact checkers. But this time, fact checking is not going to just probably get you off the platform. Uh, you're not just going to get maybe some Facebook ban for 30 days or whatever. Um, you're going to be a cyber criminal and probably have to face criminal charges for what you said or what you've done. And um, <laughs> yeah, that's the future can be either very, very good or very, very concerning. And I think not much in, in between. And a lot of stuff will be a, unfolding the next couple of years. So actually, like I've been thinking, the new section in like 2030 will be very, very different. Like I'm wondering what kind of world we're going to be in at that point. Um, uh, yeah, so this was a new section.